Hi everyone, my name is Irene and welcome to my channel, Living Around. Mabuhay, kamo esta kayong alahat to Philippines and salamat datang apa kabar Malaysia, Indonesia and welcome to this channel, all the plant friends in the world. In this episode, I'm going to share with you some selection of plants that I have curated to start your own tropical paradise. These are quite basic plants and I have chosen them based on their availability as well as how easy it is to care for them. So if you're starting out a garden or uh, wanting to redo your garden and you're not sure what to buy, this is the video for you. I'm motivated to do this video because ever since I did my video on my own garden tour and the link you can see here and also a how to design a garden video and the links also here well I have a lot of friends that have uh, been consulting me like how to do their own garden and what to do with all the space that they have what they should be planting so I thought Maybe a lot of people have these questions and um, so I'm putting out this video to share with you my thoughts. And if you like this sort of content, do remember to click on the subscribe button. Now we start with the 12 plants. The first one on my list is the frangipani. The frangipani tree is beautiful. It's also called the Plumera. Originally, it's from Central America, but now it is widely available all across India and Southeast Asia as well. So if you're in a tropical country and you have the space for it, do consider a Plumera tree. Why do I like it? Because it has beautiful flowers. And then it's also a tree that you could later hang on other plants on it. Now, they, there's a lot of folklore and stories with these plants. And it is said that if a girl puts a flower on her right ear, then she's available. And if she puts it on her left ear, it means she's taken. So the plumeria comes in a big variety of colors and this is what makes them so interesting. The second plant on my list is the Heliconia. It is related to the ginger banana family and it can grow up pretty tall. The ones that I have in my garden and I have a lot of them in my garden, I think they are now touching um, 15, 20 feet high. And I have so many of them because I just love this tropical vibes that they bring in. I love the huge foliage that it has and this bright, bold, beautiful flowers and there are many, many varieties. There are the ones that hang down like the rostrata and also the ones that stand upright like this one here in the image. And um, I haven't quite memorized all their names here yet so I'll just show you the picture for now. And Heliconia too are you have to have some space for them i will have to give you that it's not somewhere you could plant and uh, flourish in a balcony so well so you do need to have some ground space best to plant them in the ground but if you do so do have a way of controlling them to maintain it because if you don't they can curl like weeds and get pretty much out of control plan number three is the fern tree Fern tree is essentially just a larger fern and I love it so much. I have four or five of them in my garden because I feel like their fronds are, can be so huge and then they are so graceful and lace-like and whenever there's wind or rain in the garden, they look like they're just dancing. And so try get one if you can. If you can't find them where you are, then maybe a good alternative is like a ginger related plant because its leaves here are also um, quite widely spaced out and also you could get the effect of them being quite graceful and also dancing in your garden. And the good thing about ginger plant is they're very very easy to care for. I have to say the fern tree, there is a much more fussy lot. Like Last week, I was renovating my garden and I moved them about 10 feet away from where they were to another spot and then they didn't like it and they just started browning up. So if you want something more um, fuss-free, 
then consider ginger plant. Ginger plant have a lot of different flowers. The basic ones are these red ones, which is more readily available. There are also this pink one that's the ginger, um, the jungle queen. They have also the jungle king. And then there is this particular one called the ginger torch. The ginger torch, we call it Bunga Kantan in Malaysia. It's also edible. And if you're in this part of the country, you should definitely get that for your garden. Fast free, beautiful, and edible. And now we come to plant number four. This is the bird nest fern. Also another commonly found plants here. And it is a gorgeous piece of fern because once again, it can be so large. So it, this is a plant that can potentially give you that kind of volume to fill up your garden if you want to make something lush quickly. And the thing about bird nest fern is it's actually an epiphyte. So in nature, it tends to grow on trees. If you do have a tree, try put it on your tree and so that it sits there in its natural habitat. If not, you could also plant it in a pot. But just make sure that you don't use any heavy potting media. I think cocoa chip would do fine. One thing I do have to caution you about the bird nest fern, I have one planted on the ground here about two years ago and then it's gone really, really large. It's now about, I think, 10, 12 feet across and eating up a lot of space in my garden. So I have to now figure out where to put it. So maybe if you want to control its growth, um, maybe put it in a pot instead of in the ground. So all the plants that I brought you through just now, the frangipani, heliconia, tree fern, ginger plant, bird nest, they're all fairly large plants. Now let's go through the more medium-sized plants. And first up, this is the Defenbachia. The Defenbachia or the dump cane plant, I feel like it's a very much overlooked plant. Um, there has been no craze about it like the anthuriums or the philodendrons or alocasia. And so they are pretty much underrated and still available quite cheaply. So that's the good news. And Defenbachia, why do I love them? because their leaves can grow quickly and into very large form. And often they have patterns on them. So it gives them that natural variegation, which they don't lose because it's in their genes. You know, all this craze about variegated plants, which uh, I also have this craze, um, not judging anyone here, but it, it's something that you do have to spend a lot of money on and then sometimes the variegation is not stable. So here we have a plant, a species of plant, a family of plant that's often comes variegated and then it's, it's permanent, it's stable. So I strongly encourage you to have Defenbachias in your tropical garden. Next plant, plant number six is the Homalomina. The Homalomina is a plant that is quite cute in my opinion. It's the leaves could be about the size of your face and then it's rounded, it's got really nice texture. Also, this is quite an affordable and, and you can find this easily in nurseries, at least in the part of the world that I am in. So another way to also fill up the garden. I call it kind of like a filler plant to fill up the spaces in between because uh, while it is a very nice plant, it is not a showy plant. And sometimes it is important to have them because you can't have every single plant that showy. Then um, the eye could get very distracted. So it is a nice complementary plant to the rest of your other plants. Plant number seven is the Boston fern. Yes, it's a common plant. And yes, it's a common plant. It's readily available and you can get it at a very reasonable price. So what's not to love? But much more than that, why I love it is because of the effect it has on the garden. This is a plant that you want to hang up or at least place it on an elevated position. So it gives that extra layered look to your garden. So with the Boston fern, it does this job very well because that it could kind of grow out its fronds and drape it everywhere, giving you that very cozy and graceful feel to the garden. Next plant on our list is the humble pothos. Why the pothos? Because it is actually a very mighty plant and 
it's very readily available and this is such an easy plant to take care of. A lot of people recommend it for beginners because it is safe that you cannot kill this plant. So the pothos, why do I love it so much? Well, because it's so versatile. It is one that you could put up hanging and then it could grow draping down. Or if you put it on the ground and um, leaning against a wall or a tree, it will creep up very happily. And its leaves tends to get bigger and bigger as it climbs up. And also there's a few variety too. There is this one, which is quite common. Then you can get them in a more neon green color. And even with this, there's a few different types. There's a pothos neon. This one, I think it's called a philodendron uh, lime. Not very sure about the ID. And some even gives you a combination of these both colors. This is called the philodendron Brazil. And if you could get your hands on this, I highly recommend this. Also a very easy plant. All behaving in a very similar way. You could grow it out in a pot, let it climb up, drape down. And so the sizes varies too. As it matures up on a tree or on a wall, it could get bigger leaves. Or if you just want to let it hang on the shelves or drape it down, it does that job really well. Next, plant number nine is the Aglonemas. Aglonemas are also a very underrated in the plant community. Like it doesn't, you know, trend or get Instagram so much, but it is a lovely addition to the garden. Why? Because first it can get to a really decent size. Like this one here, its leaves are usually have uh, patterns and have colors. Like this one, even though it's green, you could see it's lovely patterns on it. So it's like having a very good up plant without paying for a very good up plant. And this big pot here, I just bought it yesterday actually. I got it for 25 ringgit and that's about uh, $5. Another reason why I like it is also because it can give a pop of color to your garden. This one was given to me by my neighbor a couple of weeks ago. And also it's super easy to propagate. She basically just uh, cut the top of her plant and then I just stick it on the soil. And there are so many, many different types. This one gives you a dash of pinkish red and I have seen some that's even more in solid red. So do consider getting agronemas for the garden easy and gives you that pop of color. Plant number 10, the caladium. Why the caladium? Well, because it adds a really nice touch and pop of color in a foliage garden. A tropical foliage garden is typically very, very green. And so the caladium adds a really nice touch of that color. Um, you can find them in all sorts of colors and patterns. And the thing to watch out for is that they can go into dormancy. So I've had some challenges uh, with that recently with the monsoon rain and all, not enough sun. So make sure you have the right space for it. Give it enough sun and also give it enough water. With these two, they can thrive. Plant number 11 is the Tradescandia zebrina, or more commonly known as the Wandering Jew. Maybe that's not so correct, but that's the name I think most people remember it as. Why this plant? Because it's got really beautiful foliage. It is purple and silver, and the underside is purple. And best of all, it grows so easily in a tropical country like here you could just chuck it to the ground and it will start to grow by itself so it makes a great ground cover the last plant on the list is the monstera deliciosa this is a very much loved plant and the form and structure is just so beautiful the one here you see on the screen now this is a medium-sized one and as it grows bigger and as it matures, you will see more splits in the leaf as well as more fenestration. Fenest fenestration are these holes that you see. And I have another one, actually I have several, about four or five I think, of these giant sized monsteras. And I love it because they are just such a wonderful structure to have. 
And if you put them up against a wall, this is another plant that behaves very much like the pothos and any other philodendrons. They will grow really, they can grow really, really large. I'm not sure if that will destroy the wall, it probably will, but hey, I think I don't mind. So I hope you've enjoyed this video and I wish you very well and good luck with starting your own tropical jungle or garden. But just keep to remember these are just some suggested plants based on the availability and the prices that there are in my area. You can also kind of switch and swap them out as you like and of course add more to it. The idea is just to remember to make a garden that is layered, have something big, medium size, small, creeping, something that's up hanging creeping up, going up, because chaos is what makes a tropical jungle. Bye bye and oh please do remember to subscribe to my channel and like this video if you've enjoyed it. Bye bye!